we begin in violent agreement. The roads and bridges of our state need help. They're in disrepair. They're inadequate to the traffic volume. Travel times are unpredictable and unnecessarily unsafe. We simply cannot get safely and predictably around our state, from Fort Morgan to Durango, from Pueblo to Grand Junction, from Springfield in the far southeast corner of our state to Greystone in the far northwest corner of our state. For heaven's sakes, we can't even get from Colorado Springs to Denver reliably. So we are in agreement around that, but we immediately hit off-ramps when we start to talk about the solution. The first off-ramp we hit with this particular bill is the idea of multimodal transportation. The people come to us and say, give us roads and bridges that work for us, and we say, and let me quote from the bill, public transit infrastructure and operations. Transportation infrastructure designed for users of non-motorized mobility enhancing equipment. Other than portions of highways, roads, streets designed primarily for personal or single occupant motor vehicle. That is the description of a car, other than car. Buses and rail facilities. First and final mile connections to bus and rail facilities. Related roadway or intersection improvements to integrate rail facilities. Development and implementation of new transportation technology. I would question whether it's the appropriate role of government to be developing new transportation technology. I think that's something that clearly resides elsewhere other than in the province of government. The second off-ramp we hit is the people are calling upon us to focus and prioritize the taxes that we are already collecting on the living they are struggling to earn. This bill, in response to that request to prioritize, offers them a 21% increase in the sales tax they pay. It has a disparate impact on poor communities. This bill talks about a temporary tax, 20 years being the definition of temporary. How many of you consider your mortgage to be temporary? This is fundamentally a permanent tax increase. The third off-ramp we hit is the people expect transparency and clarity in the work of government. This bill blesses us with additional layers of bureaucracy. The bill leaves open the question of which projects will be done first and in what order will they be done. We are headed for a train wreck with this bill. The budget that we will take up next week and the Senate is already engaged in has a 4.2% increase in total funds. It has a 6.7% increase in general funds, the fungible money this body has authority over. The early indications are the people do not like this idea. How could you fault them? How many household budgets have increased more than 6.7%? How many kitchen table conversations are around things like, gee, we have a 10% increase in wages this year, and it's too bad the state only got a 6.7% increase? Small business efforts are not keeping up with the growth of government either. The people are crying out to us to do the work necessary to prioritize the taxes they have already paid by the sweat of their brow. This bill does not do that. This, this bill simply turns to those people who have sent us to do the difficult work and says, more? This bill says to the taxpayers, even though the state budget is growing faster than yours, this bill asks for more. We must turn the tables on that. We must not ask for more from the taxpayers. Instead, we must ask for more from ourselves, from this body, from the Senate, from CDOT. 
We must avoid the train wreck. We must do the hard work that begins by prioritizing some portion of that 6.7% increase in general fund money that is already baked into the budget. That's $667 million in additional general fund money. That must be reprioritized. We should direct it to roads and bridges within this state, some portion of that. I urge your opposition to this taxing bill.